Hello, everybody. Long time no see. It's it's another Sunday. I hope everyone's Sundays are doing well. I still, it's funny, we had con like two weeks ago and I still feel like death. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, so we might see um, Thermo in a little while. They're still getting ready. But this is a really exciting topic. This is one of our favorite topics, actually. We had a panel at SakuraCon just a couple weeks ago. Was it on Sunday? I think it was on Sunday, too, uh, yes. to, to dis discuss this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, we talked a little bit about competition, and build books are a huge part of that. And so it's kind of exciting being able to have an entire hour to focus down on something so essential. But uh, quick introductions. Hello, everybody. I'm Chibi Raincloud. Um, I'm the Cost Talk Live representative of the Seattle area. Uh, I've been cosplaying for a long time, a very long time. I found my original, my very first con badge this weekend going through stuff, and it made me <laughs> made me feel old, uh, but also happy at the same time. Um, I've been competing since 2018, give or take. Um, and uh, I feel like I'm finally starting to get like a good handle on things. I'm really proud of my latest build book, which is why I wanted to talk about it. So uh, we're going to share our build books and stuff. But uh, that's me. And then onward to Sakura. Um, hi, I'm joining as a, a extra body today because I've been competing since uh, 2016. I've been cosplaying since 08 and also organizing competitions since 2016. And I work for a convention in Penticton, British Columbia as their uh, cosplay coordinator. And cosplay-wise, I pride myself on clean craftsmanship and accuracy where possible, while also adding things to my cosplays that give it its own little flair while still trying to faithfully recreate outfits, especially for competition. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited to to share build book stuff. I feel so out of place with you goth kids. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what is with your makeup today? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, and we're cosplaying uh, from Black Butler in honor of the new season release. Um, I am yeah. Edgar Redman. Uh, you should go watch the new season if you're an old school fan. It's very good. And I'm Gregory Violet. Let's see the changes here. Welcome. Um, <laughs> what happened? Happy Hi. Saturday. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm having so. Um, I need to message one of our admins because Facebook's completely disconnected. So we are not streaming to Facebook right now. So I'm going to, uh, hi, I'm Thermo Cosplay. Um, and I'm also joining this conversation once I have figured this out. So let me message our admin because she owns the connection. Good luck. The joys of Facebook. Yep. But for everybody else uh, joining us from uh, Twitch and YouTube, hello, welcome, thank you. Um, you know what? I think we could just dive right in. This is a pretty hefty topic. I know we could go over an hour on it, so. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, uh, we actually have something prepared for once uh, because one, we just did a panel. So we actually had a lot of our information in front of us and had to discuss this thing anyways. And we're also going to discuss uh, one of our good friends, um, Alkalade Impulse. They did a, a fantastic job. They won Best at Show at SakuraCon this year. I'm so proud of them. They're, I watched Aki grow up into this world and become a competitor. So I'm so proud to see them. Um, but we're going to show off their build book. We got permission from them to show off their incredible work uh, to show what a best in show build book is going to look like. But yes, and hello, Matt. Hiya. Okay, so our admin is going to reconnect. Um, so Facebook will be joining a little bit later. Um, she's working on it right now, and then she'll message me, and then I'll just add it back to the stream. Um, and also, I don't know if you guys have done it yet, but as a reminder, we are streaming to four places now. We stream to Twitch under Cause Talk Live. We stream to YouTube under Cause Talk Live. We stream to Facebook under Cause Talk Live. And we are also streaming live to Age of Radio, who is our sponsor. Ooh, exciting. Awesome. Then I, will, I, I, I don't know if you guys want me to do anything else. I was, I'm so sorry. I heard you introducing yourselves and then I spaced when I realized there was a technology problem. <laughs> you're good. You're good. No, we're just going to dive right in because we have like the organized PowerPoint to kind of guide us. And uh, yeah, we're just going to get started, I guess. Do we do, 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 ba, ba. Yeah. Hello. Look, we have a pretty thing. Yeah. 
I We're gonna be talking about build books. Um and basically like this is what we're gonna go over, uh, just so you have an idea um of what's going on today. And then at the end, we're gonna share uh build book examples from um myself, Chibi, and Alicade. As well as Sam, I think. Are you sharing your stuff? <laughs> yes. Okay, awesome. Alrighty. So I guess the the first question is like why why should you have a build book and why in some competitions do you actually need one um so a lot of times you need to be able to show like what you've done and explain it to the judges and build books can help with this um and a lot of times pictures and like showing off your costume can say so much more than just explaining something, especially if it's like a finishing inside of the outfit or an inner piece that may not be easily seen from my the outside. Two, yeah, my do says three layers. Um, I have the black, I have the white, and then I have the overcoat. And so I have pictures of each one of the like layers so the judges can see everything underneath and how clean the insides of everything are that they wouldn't be able to see because you'd have to strip me half off uh, just to see some of those seams. So I find build books really useful for pieces that are going to not be seen by the judges so they can get a better idea of what the internal structure of your cosplay looks like. Mm -hmm. And also it can be very helpful if you are nervous and can't really remember like what to talk about. Your build book can help guide the conversation, whether it be like you flipping through it for the judges and showing them, oh, you know, this is this piece. This is, you know, a rundown of how I did it. And it can also help the judges to remember after your three minutes, 30 seconds ish, depending on the competition uh, of what your outfit was about or like things that you may have missed talking about because reasons and brains 100 percent <laughs> always forget to talk about my wig without fail every every time i compete i without fail will forget to talk about my wig <laughs> so yeah and like it's really really helpful for judges at higher levels too if they're having issues or well not issues but like they're deliberating between two competitors and they're like mm similar things honestly your build book can really make a, a big difference in that respect when i did one of my my it was a great judging experience but the worst competition i'd ever been in um when i asked the judges for feedback one of their biggest advices to me was i needed a build book uh because this was when i had i literally had finished deuce that night so i had nothing prepared um i honestly was expecting a smaller uh con with like less competition so i was like i won't need a build book it's fine but at the very end the judges were like we really wish you'd had a build book so we could have looked like over your details more because we felt like we didn't get enough time with you and i feel like a build book would have really helped us like look over your stuff in better detail plus as a judge, I like being able to see people's work. Um, it, it's very helpful when you're like, after you've seen 50 people and you're sitting there deliberating with judges, having that book in your hand where you can point out, hey, this was the detail that I saw was super clean. We should really think about this piece. And being able to show it to the other judges who may have missed it, super useful. Yeah. So... A lot of times, well, can I build books in for one second? Of course, yeah. anytime, Sam. Okay, I will say because we've got a lot of new judges that I've been meeting throughout the country. Mm -hmm. I will say if you are a judge that feels uncomfortable because of like um, maybe you've got an immune autoimmune disorder or something else, I recommend notifying whoever's coordinating the event in advance so that they can maybe send you a digital version and you can look at it at your own leisure on like your phone or on your computer um, because I've encountered at a few different conventions now where um, newer judges in my rightfully so because of like, you know, COVID and other illnesses and stuff are concerned about physically touching build books that they will step back into a contestant. That seems very rude. Um, as someone who's a judge, I would feel bad about maybe alienating someone just because I'm worried about them giving me a sickness. So just be mindful that if you know you're going to be concerned about that, which is totally fine, um, maybe ask for a digital copy copy that you can then, while they're showing you their physical, pull up that virtual that you have on your device that you feel more comfortable using and show it. Um, just because I, 
absolutely agree with staying healthy, but I also know that by stepping back and ignoring what someone's provided you with, it might make them feel as though they've done something wrong. It, it, it's honestly a lot of cons have switched to having a digital option for judges to see. Um, I know soccer con, like basically you're everything that you're doing, you're applying online and posting it to them directly. So um, yeah, that's a very important. Yeah. Note. And, and also, I, I always system. have, I always have everything well, on my phone too. Just I've had it a few times where there's like six judges. We can't all look at the book and I'm like, Hey, do you have this somewhere on Google? Can you just share it with me right now? And I'll look at it here while everyone else is sharing that book. And half the time, even contestants are like, oh, yeah, sure. Here you go. Or they're like, here's my Instagram. I've logged everything here. So it's just one thing I wanted to mention because I've noticed it um, in like a lot of West Coast. I haven't been on East Coast. I don't know if it's different, but I know some West Coast that um, with newer judges who um, are absolutely keep trying to take care of themselves, that is kind of a problem becoming an issue. Mm -hmm. And actually, from my experience, most competitors do make digital build books nowadays, just because it's a lot easier to organize things. Mm -hmm. um, and remember what you did when you did something cool, and then you're like, how did I do that? <laughs> yeah. Also, hi, Sarah, I see you. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's really, um, it's definitely like now we're seeing a lot more digital for stuff. And I honestly made my first digital deal, build book for Deuce. That was my first one I did. And you'll see it. I, I'm very proud of it. It looks really good. It's very organized. And the nice thing is once you've like finished it, you can still go in and change things, which I've already changed one or two things since competing in him because I'm like, oh shit, I forgot to put that picture in. Um, so like you can continue to like evolve that if you're competing in it in multiple places. Mm -hmm. And that actually brings us into documenting progress to put in your build book. Um, so there is quite a few different ways that you can do it. Um, you definitely have to take like photos or if you are bad at taking photos, like set up a, a, a video and then you can screenshot things afterwards when you have like, oh, I was working on this. It shows great. Um, yeah, I've done that we, when I do resin casting because it's really hard to like, stop when you're in the middle of trying to make sure all the chemicals are staying active. So yeah. No, it's, it's very handy. Um, but if you are like bad at actually documenting your progress, a great way of mitigating that is, you know, posting online or saving things to like your phone in like a, a progress thing. But what I find a lot more helpful is people holding each other accountable in the respect of like asking, hey, did you take pictures of this? Or, hey, show me your your progress today. And like that can really help as well as documenting things online specifically with apps like Costgear. I, I'm going to date myself here. Um, I used to use Cost Planner, which is like it, that it's was okay. Keto. He Rest did that in peace. Years. Yeah. Rest in peace. <laughs> yeah. And like it was basically a place where you could like log your time and log, you know, your pieces, but it wasn't that great. And then Cost Gear came along and it's like that on steroids and then some, which is it's, it's a really, really nice. exciting app because one, it is programmed to be your documenter. Um, we're going to go into detail with cost gear, uh, in a little bit, but, um, the second part of cost gear actually folds into the first part, which is friends. Like it's built to have a community of builders. It's not built around social media where it's a finished product. So it's a really great place because it actually encourages you to post your whips. Like that's I the feel whole like it has less gear. pressure, right? Because social yeah. media you can get hit so hard with people, but on this, it really is just, Hey, this is what I posted. Like, this is what I did. And you can see um, people just hype people up. 
Yeah, and so like you can do it in the app or you can even join the Discord. So like um, I know AK Weiru's Discord is a really great place for like talking about cosplay and holding each other accountable. Um, even watching his streams, he always like, hey guys, can you remind me to take pictures? You can do the same thing. He encourages you to stream with him. So finding cosplayers to stream with. Um, with Cosgear's Discord, it's really great because there's a bunch of people to chat with. There's a bunch of rooms to ask questions in. Um, I'm sure you can find a local cosplay Discord of people, maybe find some other people interested in working together. Like maybe you're all going to compete at the same competition. Doesn't matter if you're competing together or separately, but you can keep each other accountable by doing a group chat check in weekly or every couple of days, especially near Con Crunch. And then, but like the nice thing is if you're looking for a place that has like all of that together, Cost gear is the answer to that. No, I um I've been using cost gear, cost gear for over a year now. I'm I signed the paperwork. I'm officially sponsored by them. I don't know what to do, but um <laughs> yes. but it's crazy. I I love these guys because not only is this app like really up to date, but it's constantly being updated and they listen to their audience. If you're in the discord going, Hey, I really want a timer. Like me and soccer were like, Hey, we do competition things and we need to keep track of how much time each piece takes. Like, can you put a timer in the app? And they did. And then they asked, wait, do you want us to like set a timer that like a stopwatch timer or where you can like put your own time in? Well, we said both and they did both. So like they actually listen to what cosplayers want and need. And it's not just for competition too. If you're just doing a big build for yourself or for a group, if you're into commissions, they have it set up where you can put X, like other people's measurements in. So like there's a bunch of different ways to use it, but one of the best ways to use it is it's resource library and community where you can actually put all of your build book stuff in one place. And then if you need to make a digital file later, you can do that. And it won't be bogged up in your Instagram where you have like a bunch of random posts. You'll have, here's the, uh, like, here's what I'm building. Here's all the pictures and the whip that goes with it, with the dates that you posted them. So it's a really great tool for organizing and each, like you can add each step and it does timestamps just automatically. So you're not like, oh, when did I do this piece or how long did this take me? Like you just put it in and it's done, um, which is super, super nice. It, it is very much like cost planner on steroids. I've also now gotten in the habit of using the resource library. It's still growing, but as you upload pictures, you're actually, you can make the option of keeping them private for yourself or allowing the community to see them. And if you allow the community library to see them, people can use your references. I actually was looking at Hua Chang and some other Heaven Official Blessing costumes. So I just typed in the characters' names and a whole bunch of hits popped up. And I was able to pull some of the other really great references. Somebody had the art book and just posted all the pages of the art book. So I just pulled those off and was like, this is so amazing because I do not own that art book. Um, and so now I really actually try to find really good resources to put into the library not only for myself but for other people that might be cosplaying from that particular one yeah and uh there's a, i'm actually working on event tracking more we're doing more event tracking so if you guys have any ideas for events and like how you want to see those labeled message me because i can talk to them um but also it's just a really great place uh especially because it's not like pressure for Here's the finished piece. It's pressure for, I want to see how you sewed that, uh, which I really like. And this is um, one of my finished pieces. This is Deuce. This is kind of a layout. Actually, we'll probably have Sam pull up their full, uh, the full one. So you can actually see how the app works itself. But these are just some references of like what I have. You can see my reference library of the pictures I used. Uh, you can categorize them too. So if you're looking for something particular, uh, they've now set it up so you have a color palette. So you can put your pictures in and get a color palette. Uh, I like so that because I, it reminds me of like where I need to focus more. <laughs> exactly. And it's so cool because if you're not the type to want to share any of this information, you can also toggle it, off, toggle it off. Like people don't have to see your profile or your pictures. It's just if you want that community aspect, people can look on your page and see what you're working on. You can also add a primary list of materials you're using and skill sets you're using so people can get an idea of what you do and what you work on. It's also broken down by like, here's the skills I'm doing and here's the skills I'm learning, which is really nice. If you're doing something new, maybe you can connect with another cosplayer who's either a master in lighting, like I'm looking at the lighting pieces now, um, or somebody who's also interested and wants to learn alongside you. But uh, here's a little bit of the, the tracking process. Um, like I said, we can probably pull it up so you can see the actual thing in action, but you can break it down by whatever you want. 
Um, I usually go from top to bottom just because that's my organization, but you can rearrange the bars as you need them. If you forget a piece and need to add something in, you can just put them in whatever order you like. Um, it's based off of percentages. So you can put in how long it takes to do something as well as how far the progress is and then see your overall progress, which for me is a big winner when I'm getting near con the end, the, like con crunches hit me and I'm like, oh, I'm at 90%. We're almost there, kids. Um, but it's super fun. I just, it's such a great place to finally have absolutely everything in one place. And you can choose to just post up your whips, um, but they'll ask if you want to share your whips. So like it'll automatically be shared onto the social media side of the app. And you can put a little tidbit about like, oh, this is what I'm working on right now. And here's the techniques I used. Um, or you can just post it for yourself and people can always look on your page. But yeah, that's Hendo. She's also a lovely, a lovely human that is working on that. But it's so great to be part of a community. I have found that a lot of like my building process is honestly getting more exciting because I am part of a community now and I am getting more involved with other competitors. And it's more of just like not just the green room conversation. It's like we're all discussing stuff and seeing each other build, asking each other questions and like really like getting each other excited, especially when you find somebody who's competing in like something that you like, or you're already building or a series that you're in love with. I, I get so hyped when I see other Twisted Wonderland cosplayers that compete. Like it's just something I get super excited about. And honestly, I've made a couple of friends just by posting my whips on the social media aspect of the app and people commenting, asking me questions about what I'm doing or how I did something. And now we follow each other on the app and discuss what we're doing. No, and like with the push on like, especially like Facebook and Instagram, where it's like, you want the finish thing. I find this so handy because like, I like sharing my whips, but it's like, this is a place where they are super well received and people are, it's just really a community focused thing. And it's, it's really wonderful to see people building things and learning skills and getting excited about sharing unfinished things which and instead of like one of my biggest things that was really rough on me in the beginning when I was comp competing is I'd build the whole costume and then I'd build the build book last and by then you're tired you're stressed you're probably con crunching you're going to forget things you're going to fit forget details put like not write the right thing in now, as I'm writing things out on my cost gear, I'm literally doing my progress on cost gear. So I can just copy and paste everything into my build book. Like it's all done. I already have my notes written. I have every step I've done all written out and it's done as I'm doing it. So at the very end, now I'm just copying, pasting and making my build book look pretty and not focused on, oh, what did I like? Did I forget a step? Am I forgetting something? Because it's all in one place and it's all organized how I would organize my build book. So I can just literally copy paste and then I'm done with that. And it's been such a godsend. It may do so much faster. It also helps um, people who have like, whether you're a, a newer cosplayer or an experienced cosplayer, all of us are always trying new techniques. And it really helps you understand just how much learning a new technique, like how much time learning a new technique can take, because you'll see the work in progress. You'll see what people are doing. You'll see them. Hey, I messed up here. Like I even have on my Safina, like I made a hood. I hated the damn hood. I took the damn hood off. I put a new hood on. <laughs> Like, so you can see that people run into issues, you know, it's, it's instead of in, in social media where you're trying to keep some kind of a persona, it takes and it removes all of the veils of, uh, you know, this is me, I'm pretty. Uh, and, it, and it brings in the reality of costuming, um, where we're doing more than just sewing, where we're having to pattern, we're having to learn how to line, reinforce, fabricate. Uh, there's just so much involved depending on the type of build you have. And some people get overwhelmed and that's why they give up because they think there's, you know, I must be doing it wrong, it's taking so long. No, no, I mean, I've got a decade of experience and I still mess up on things. So it is great to have something like this too, because it also encourages people to keep trying. It's also for me been really nice to see like the skill sets, um, the skills and the materials lists are from like the latest update. And you don't realize how much you put into a costume until you have to write out every single skill that you've done for a piece. And I ran out of spaces for my deuce for all the things that I did. Like I ended up having to like not use two of the skills that I did because I had filled the whole thing out and ran out of room. And I'm like, I did that too. Oh, I was like, oh, I did oh. so much. <laughs> <laughs> like we're the it's entire film crew. Hi. <laughs> 
but yeah, so this is a really, uh, this is a really great place to go, especially if you just need that extra community or need that extra organization because you're a chaos being and cannot keep things straight. This is a great way to go. And did you want to like share stuff live, Sam? I, I was working on it. I forgot to have it up. I'm so sorry. I, I'm so tired. I, I mean, I can stop. I can remove the this from it and then share mine. So I'll just remove this and then yeah, and you can share the app itself. Yeah. Boom. So when you log in, this is yeah. the visual that you see is you see an in progress or completed, but if you haven't separated it, then you're probably just going to have everything under in progress. Um, but there is a work in progress feed, which we've been talking about. Um, I actually kept this so that you can see that it's going to have you accept things um, and it will walk you through what each of those items are. I like that they actually have a tutorial on how to use it because a lot of new apps assume you already know how to use them. Um, and so this helps with that. You can look at your progress. Uh, you can look at all progress. You can look at the feed that you've customized. So you can customize and filter your own feed based off of elements that you enjoy or things you want to look at. Um, I need to adjust mine. <laughs> and then you can also, they have like sponsors and stuff. So you can look at those too. But the planner itself is right here. Um, this is, I'll look at, so the, uh, should I show a completed one or should I show one that I'm about to work on right now? Uh, I would, whatever you have something filled out, you can show up. Oh, oh yeah, this is completely filled out. I just, uh, yeah, let's do this I have ones. all the materials. So they let you do a, a, like a primary image of what you're going to be working on. Um, then you can upload your references and see, I kept all of the tutorials for this one. I've only been accessing this on my phone in hopes to keep these tutorials live. But you can use, you can upload as many references as you want um, for this particular uh, character. Wow, it's not it's taking a while. Um, sorry, my internet's slow, but apparently it, um, I did have only three photos because there's not a lot of reference outside of the game. So. I've been slowly but surely collecting references from in the game. But let me go back real fast because I did jump past the project info. Um, and the project info, you can, you know, the character name or, um, you know, whatever you want to put. There's options for future cosplay. So if it's something you want to do in the future, you can log it and not forget about it. Because sometimes I do that and I want, I'm like, man, I, what did I want to do? That was so cool. Then you go for in progress, finished and waiting to shoot and then completed. Um, you can add the fandom that it's from, its origin, um, whether it's a full cosplay build, group, casual, there's all kinds of types, which is really nice. Um, you can even throw a commission in here too. So that's nice too, if you're trying to track when someone, you know, you had someone build it. A uh, budget, which um, I try to keep this as accurate as possible, but let's be honest, we always end up finding something. I'm like, oh, but that would look so pretty too. I'm not add this on here. This is a good way to track and figure out just how much you're spending to make costumes and then your deadlines and you get to adjust this progress bar however far you wanna do. So um, it will send you, it'll like you saw the little nose, good job, you've worked on your costume. So they're really sweet. I like that they kind of encourage you along the way too. Um, this is the page, this is the color palette that you saw Chibi sharing. Um, and these are like the primary materials and techniques. Um, I haven't added hours, days, or weeks yet because all I've done is purchased all of the materials for this. Um, and if you wanna see everything on that couch is just for that costume. <laughs> it's glorious. And there's more, yeah, there's more. <laughs> I'm still missing the purse and I still have to get, I forgot the sleeve is a different material. So yeah. Anyway. I, uh, <laughs> I thought I knew what I was going to compete and work on next. And then I watched the first episode of Kurashitsuji and now I'm rethinking my entire life. <laughs> <Yeah. Same thing. laughs> um, this is a good thing. Like here I need to put, you know, I could, I'll show you guys like one real fast. I'll just do a title only. I'm going to put, okay. Get yourself a purse. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you thank you for coming in from twitch um I haven't checked out cost in a while yes if you haven't been on cost in a while you prepare to be shocked there's been a lot yeah. of updates and there's a new update coming up it's soon. amazing um, um and then yeah. this is the costume build so this is where i started tracking um so i started tracking the fabric supplies i scale fabric iridescent trim lace trim um and i started going through all the elements that i need and i began purchasing things you know, I like that you can put in the list all the type of items that you purchased. 
Um, this particular character has a lot of body jewelry that I'm going to have to make and sew and modify. I bought some really cheap jewelry that I can use as a base to understand how it's connected, but I'm probably not going to keep it. I'm going to build my own. I just needed to see how does jewelry work <laughs> um, because I don't make jewelry a lot. So I needed like a sample. I was like, this is a $5 piece of crap jewelry, but at least it's connected properly and I'll know what to do. Um, and so these are, you have the ability to add sections where you would break up shopping, pattern making, and then you could add tasks beneath each section. Um, so here I've got, like I said, I've got a section for pattern making, what I need to pattern for crafting, uh, for what I need to do for shoes uh, and test fitting. Um, you can add new sections at any time. You can this add new is tasks. A, this is, sorry, don't be to interrupt. Uh, this is a really okay. good example of how good this app is. You can literally organize it however you want. Sam organized it by tasks to do. I organize mine by each piece. So like I have wig, headpiece, undershirt, overshirt, jacket. Mm -hmm. Like I broke mine into pieces. So I had like mock-up pattern and all that in the shirt piece. But you can see here, Sam actually organized it more by task-based stuff. So like cosplay yeah. is meant to be completely organized by whatever you need and what your needs are for a cosplayer. And it even has in here whether you need to buy that item, make it, or learn how to make it too. So I'm actually needing to add a few more tasks in here to learn. I, I haven't done jewelry making in so long that I actually kind of have to relearn it. So mm -hmm. I like that it lets you track that time too, because a lot of people don't, they underestimate the amount of time they're sinking into learning a technique. I spent um, like almost 40 hours learning how to do digital art for Deuce and like just testing things out and learning and practicing. And I only logged a couple of those, but it was somewhere in the 40, 40 hour range. And I went, oh, wow, that that's a lot of time that gets added onto this. <laughs> yep. Yep. Nope. It, it, I, I like that they allow you to do this. And then I started... Um, when you add images, you have the ability to add a title to it, and then it'll tell you the date that you uploaded it. So I like this because then I could say, these are all of my supplies, and then I'll start titling, this is mm, patterning this, this is sewing this, this is crafting this. I Maybe I 3D print an element because I'm experimenting with a really weird new translucent plastic. I have to see if it can stand my heat in my state. We'll, we'll find yeah. out. Adventures. <laughs> The fact that it prints at 200, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> I think it'll be okay. Um, but those are useful. And then you can add events. Like, I'm going to wear this at a Phoenix Fan Fusion. The cool thing here, too, if you don't know your own measurements, um, this, I don't think, I have not edited this at all. Okay, I need to edit this. Because um, <laughs> I've been losing a lot of weight, and this is all inaccurate. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. You can add your height and you it'll do it. Uh, if you know inches, you can start there or centimeters. It, either way, um, shoe size, cup size. So this is good for reminding yourself of what your measurements are. Or if you are a commissioner, it's a way to make sure you have it stored somewhere and it's not going to accidentally get lost. It's also really convenient because I, as a long-term seamstress, I've learned that a lot of people don't know how to actually take proper measurements. And the, the little, the little like graphic they have there is a really good example of showing what each piece, like you should be yes. measuring for each step. And even I still sometimes have to message soccer and go, how do I measure this piece? Because I always forget certain ones, but yeah, this is I got lucky. I was trained by tuxedo specialists. So I learned very early on how to do very proper fittings. That's the only reason why I knew how to measure when I first started cosplaying is because I, I I worked as a tuxedo expert. <laughs> But that's exactly but most it. people like, don't have that. <laughs> it's a really great, like, even if you don't know how to do it, it kind of does guide your hand, which is really yeah. nice because it it is, you don't realize how important your measurements are until you get them perfectly. And then you have like your golden yeah. child. I have like a pattern. Well, I have to make a new one, but like, usually we have a pattern that's the golden child. It has all of the correct measurements. It fits us just right. And we can use this pattern to like alter to other pieces. Um, and so like, as you're learning your measurements and stuff, this is a really good first step to getting to getting that gold. And if you have a dress form and you're taller than five foot six, there is an adjustment on the inside of the dress form that lets you extend the waist out a little bit. Most so the average American sizing from nape to the bottom of the groin is only 16 inches. Mine is 19 and a half. So I have to adjust that because otherwise my patterns give me the worst wedgie in the world. <laughs> so, like, you want to 
be mindful of length, in my opinion. Like most of us get the circumference of things correct. It's length that we typically end up goofing up on. And one of the key things for me is I don't know how many times I forget to write down things before I go to Joanne's to buy my fabric. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, how much fabric do I need? I need my measurements. <laughs> well, now I can just open cost gear and be like, OK, that's the that's the length I need. Let's do this. Like, it's such a great thing to have. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you can come into the progress up update area and you can choose existing images to add to it or you can uh, showcase finished pieces. So I really like that. Like you don't even if you you're not in the work in progress feed, you can just come straight to your profile and create one based off of that. Mm -hmm. So that's the um, planner area. And there's like I said, in progress and completed under your profile, there's going to be cause plans. Port so cause plans will have everything. Then there's a portfolio, which is typically only your completed projects. Mm -hmm the posts that you yourself have made, and then some information about you, you know, and, and whether, you know, the badges that you've earned and how active you are on the platform. Um, I don't know what the relevance or how, how much that's impacting things yet, but I'm sure as it grows, that might be of significance to determine if you're more active, maybe you'll be able to answer some of those questions faster. Um, another thing you mentioned was the, uh, um, the resources so mm -hmm. these are this is an entire menu there's a resources there's a fabric finder area i have to tell you as someone who doesn't know a whole lot about fabric other than spandex and nylon and knit um and vinyl i know all the weird crap <laughs> like the normal stuff like cotton and twill and canvas i have no idea what its purpose is so this has been very useful <laughs> Um, and it will tell you like whether it dies well, what the fiber is like, how much it stretches, if it can handle a structure, what its weight is. And so this is incredibly useful for people who are trying to bust outside of maybe their normal materials. And then the resources page um, has guides, um, photos, patterns, tools, all kinds of things. So that's, I think, an active cause gear file is there anything else anybody know that to be? that was a really good uh mm -hmm. showing of how the app works and all the like extra and then i'll stuff add this it. back to the stage yeah i know it's it it's such a useful app and it seems intimidating because there's a lot going on but it, it really does walk you through it it shows you how the app works and the community is lovely they're lovely humans they are more than likely yeah. if you have a question you can just come and ask it um all of us are there to help support each other which is really nice and if you're not ready to start the app you can always join the discord um it's a great place to start you get to start to know some of the faces that are in the app and if you just have a couple cosplay questions like hey guys i've never built a a wig before can you help give me some wig suggestions uh, and like me and hendo right now are actually making an active list of places to shop at like safe vetted cosplay places that you know you can buy things and it's broken down by country so it doesn't matter if you're from the united states canada europe australia asia you can find what you're looking for in companies that could be close to you or if you have to get out of country you can see how long that wait time between getting ordering and getting your product is. Um, and then so you if you're interested in seeing how this works in person, because I know sometimes people have a harder time with like digital platforms. If you're going to Phoenix Fan Fusion uh, at 1.30 p.m. on Friday at the event, we will be doing a live demo of Cosgear's Cosplay Planner. That's exciting. Yeah, it's it's been a really great, I think it's what the community has been looking for and asking for. I feel yeah. like we've all really just wanted a safe place that we can craft. Like, we're all nerds, we like building stuff. And this has kind of been the answer. And it's really helped me not only as like for my organization, my books and my build books, but it's just helped me as a cosplayer, like making more connections and finding more people. Because even in our Discord, we have a career conversation. So people that are either running panels or working events, or maybe they're a new judge can go in there and ask questions. And it's a totally safe space to be like, hey, how do I make my bill book? Or, hey, I've never judged this type of product before. How do people handle 3D prints? And stuff like that, which can really lead to some really awesome discussions together. As yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So once you actually have your stuff uh, organized in, you know, cost gear or however you have chosen to do it, um, you can either build your build book while you're working on stuff or just wait till the end. I honestly usually wait till the end because I'm like, oh, well, it's all here now. Um, and there are various ways to organize your build book based on what you like, 
like how you want to talk about your costume as well as like the materials and techniques you've used. And personally, I have found the item based way to be the most common, which would mean like, you know, shirt or like top stuff together, wig and, you know, hat stuff together, pants, shoes, etc. Um, because when I'm going through judging, I attempt to do head to toe or toe to head. Um, doesn't always work, but as long as there is a <coughs> basically story in your build book that makes sense to someone looking at it, um, that's really what matters. Yep. Um, and also, like, if there's something you're really excited about, make sure you tell the judges too, because we like to get excited too. Mm -hmm. And like in some cases, the technique based breakdown also works well. So like if you have a bunch of dyed items, putting them all together on, you know, a page or two might be the way to go. Um, or like, you know, embroidery or a bunch of um, vinyl work. Um, it, it's helpful visually too. Um, uh, Sakura is going to show the way that they do their build books. Sometimes you can put like examples in the book. And if you're doing like one technique or like you dyed all this and you have an example, putting them all on the same page will show exactly what you did and all the pieces that are linked to it. So instead of being like, okay, well, the skirt was dyed and the sleeves were dyed, it's the skirt was dyed, the sleeves were dyed, and here's all the little like accessory things as well. So they can see like a wide array of like, oh, this was this technique and it was used through different pieces, which is a big bonus if you're competing mm -hmm. and also the hybrid model i haven't used it a lot but it's very it can be very useful if example you've built you know a bunch of items and their like top finishing is the same example if you did a bunch of sewing work and both the pants and the shirt have embroidery items on them, then putting the embroidery together at the end is a good way to blend those two techniques without your book seeming extremely repetitive. Because um, you want to have things as clear and concise as possible while still explaining like what you made. You want to try to tell a story with your book in the sense of the, the the least amount of words you have, the better in some cases. Not all cases, there are cons that have certain rules and you have to follow whatever the cons rules for the book is. Um, but it's really, it's very helpful for judges, especially smaller events. We don't have time to read every single thing that you write in a book. So if you have a picture of, these are my Hong Kong seams and this is how I finished it. And that's all you say, these are my Hong Kong seams, but you have a picture of them. They can see one, how cleanly it is and how well you like executed that technique. And they know exactly what it is without having to read a whole bunch of text. And they might miss if you wrote, oh, while doing this piece, I made Hong Kong scenes, which I flipped over and blah, blah, blah. Like they might miss some of the details if you have a long paragraph versus just a couple of words to get your point across. Yeah. No, that's, that's the biggest thing. I admittedly, I should probably include a little bit more text than I do in my build books. And I'm trying to get a bit better at that. Um, but I like, just do like you, you put you and I soccer are probably the same words, like a, a buzzword. And I remember what that buzzword means. And yes. then I elaborate. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now that that can be extremely handy. Um, there's also with some recent like competition uh, questions of like brain. It is early. I'm still working on coffee. <laughs> Basically, like listing things that you didn't make can make it a lot easier for judges to better evaluate your costume. So example, if you bought your shoes, list bought shoes, you know, made modifications if you did, or like did not make leggings. And that can help judges focus more on what you actually did do versus what you didn't do because um, yeah, i've seen some people actually completely cobble their shoes and it blew my mind but then they never talked about it and and the only reason i knew they cobbled is because i had had enough time i received the digital ebook like a month in advance i'd had enough time to read through it and i'm thinking why didn't you mention that and i, I tell them i'm like may make sure you tell someone you cobbled your own shoe because <laughs> that is I'm, intense i mean that's 
that's honestly one of the reasons to have a build book though, because in your time, like I know I especially forget a lot of like my wig pieces or like in some costumes, I have a tail. I completely forget to talk about that. And judges sometimes ask, oh, well, what about this? But it's like, if they don't, that those items are in the build book that they can right. look at later and be like, oh, wait, this person actually did make this, but they forgot to talk about it. And not, so a, not only to like mention the honesty part, part, like there's been, if anybody's in the competition community, they know that there's been some fire about who's built what and what things were built versus what things were commissioned, et cetera. Um, so being just straight honest with your judges saying, these are the things I didn't do. Usually I'll open up when talking to the judges and these are the things I didn't do get it out of the way. But if I forget, at least it's in my build book. Um, on top of that, like I know Sakura, you competed when you competed in Longa, the judges didn't believe that you built your shirt. Like you literally had to show them pictures of you working yeah. on the piece because of how like they honestly thought it was bought because of how accurate it was. Yeah, that's that's a lot of times why you need to document your progress because I know someone years ago that competed at soccer con and she didn't take pictures of early on things and the judges would not believe that she made what she did. And it was like, Oh boy, that's like, it, it can be really rough, but just goes to show that documenting stuff, especially for competition is absolutely needed. With that in mind, Ooh. make sure to take gremlin shots. I'm the worst <laughs> at this, but you need to be taking those 3 AM. I'm exhausted pictures of yourself. Um, because you need proof that you are the one building these things. So yes. usually if I'm like doing a dye pot, I'll take a picture of like a selfie with the dye pot, or I'll have a friend take a picture of me while I'm working on something when we do like con like work things, uh, or if we're doing a group thing, uh, just because it does show that like, yeah, Hey, I was working on these things. It was me. I promise. Like, I'm not trying to cheat the system. I, have, I love what I do. Yeah. I have a bunch of images of me flipping off my costume and I blur out the flip off, but it's more of like me going, I will succeed. It is just like my tradition of flipping off my costume, <laughs> like yeah. giving it the finger. And then I seem to do better because if I don't give it the finger, it, it, it revolts against me. So it's like me putting that costume in its place. <laughs> that is glorious. And also like you can include items in your pictures too, that like mm -hmm. marks it as yours. Um, like, like it's no, your house, there's a couch, there's something else that they yeah. can see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is very handy. And like build books are there for judges to look through it, but don't make it too long because they will lose interest. Um, personally, I found like most of my build books, 10 pages is my sweet spot to explain and show enough things without it being too long. Um, yeah. Yeah, eight to 10 is about right for me. Um, and one of the tips that I learned, this is actually from Kira Lee Cosplay, if anybody follows her, um, my, my cover of my build book is going to be my references. So then the judges, I can hand them my build book and they have the reference right in their face. So they know exactly how to like compare. Um, and I didn't get to do this with Deuce because I had not, like, I don't have any pictures of Deuce. I still don't have pictures of Deuce. Um, but on the back side of your build book, you can put a picture of you in the full costume. So then the judges can open your book up and take the reference and then look at you and compare them. If this is a competition that focuses on like accuracy to the character design, Carly does this. Uh, she has a whole video on YouTube about it. Like I would go watch it. I watched that when my mind is blown. And so now I try to do that with my build books because as a judge who has been in that situation going, oh, I wish I remembered what that piece looked like after they've left. Having that like back-to-back -back reference plus your image is so helpful. Mm -hmm. No, and like when you're doing your build book, make it make sense in like organization as well as the design elements. Um, and I, I'm so excited to show actually um, allocate impulses because their usage of blue, pink, and red to show like what parts of the costumes were one exclusively and then together is just like, it's so visually beautiful and doesn't need an explanation, but it makes sense because they organized it so well. And like adding things into your build book um, that are like related to your costume without being like overly cluttered. So if you're example, the color palette with cost gear, if you are, if you've picked those colors, 
then it's like, oh, well, maybe I should use those in my build book to keep things together and like show that your build book was also inspired by your costume. Um, yeah. Kind of thing. But just make sure to keep it simple enough that it's not cluttered because if it looks cluttered, it. Well, and most conventions won't give you more than five minutes. Um, at Phoenix Fan Fusion, for instance, you're only given two minutes because we receive the build books a month out. So it's really just a last look. So you're really going top to bottom of any additional changes you've made since that last month. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we, we can get into actually showing some, uh, build books, Yay! you know, which is exciting. Um, yeah, so this is okay. mine. This is my doocy, my Lucy doocy. Um, as you can see, I put my references on the very front cover. It's not pretty. It's not like, oh, this is the character, but they can like, now my judges can look very clearly at what pieces each breakdown is and know exactly what they're looking for in the piece. Um, my techniques page is the one with the most text. Um, that's just your bullet point. Hey, these are the techniques I used. This is the material I used. These are the things to feature, um, to remember. Um, I did break it down by like technique because I had so many techniques that it just felt easier than trying to break it down by each piece. I also had a million pieces, so it would have just looked bad if I was trying to do every single piece. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a, a basic first glance for the judges to have an idea of like, okay, this is what went into this piece. Mm -hmm. Also, though, for organization, you can put, instead of a techniques page, these, like, little descriptions and stuff with the items mm -hmm. as well. That's another... I just, thing. for my brain, I like it this way because then I can, like, quick glance through things, which makes me feel better. But it is totally, like, if you do it as, through the book with each piece, it also looks amazing. Mm -hmm. No, I, I prefer the techniques and materials page myself, but it, again, it's it's personal preference. Yeah, so like this is just an idea of what those images look like. So you can see very very minor. Like I don't I don't use a lot of text. Um, it's very it's very much picture based. I do use apps. Uh, to like better my art though. So like I use just like your basic cropping image thing. So I can put images together because you can see um, the tunic piece. I had three different mock-ups for that. So I added all the mock-ups into kind of like one group picture and then labeled each one so they could see the differences between each mock-up because it wasn't very important, but I wanted to show how much work went into the mock-up. And then like an idea of like, so those were the digital cuts that I had to make for the piece. I just put them on there as like one of the images of here's all the digital cuts that went into this piece. Um, it's just a, I, in my head, this was a nice way to organize it. It is very simple, but judges can look at it and go, there's the pattern, there's the mock-up, there's them working on it. Here's how the mock-ups led into making the final piece. And I tend to not put finished pieces completely in there um, because they're going to see me finished or I'll have the finished piece on the very back. So I usually use the focus of my inner, like the internal book to focus on things that the judges can't see and my mock-up process and like the each piece that I'm doing so they get an idea of the work that went into it that they don't see. Anything else on Deuce? I think that's, yeah, no, Deuce was, <laughs> I can tell you, oh, oh, um, the most important thing. So the thing I learned that has been my best friend with when I figured out how to do with Deuce, no card. I actually go into my judging with a card with everything from like head to toe. And I don't list like details. I just usually write each piece down. So I don't forget any of the pieces or like I'll star a technique that I'll forget to talk about. Cause I've judged, I've been judged in him three times now. So like by the third time I had realized the things I forgot to talk about. And so judges will always allow you to have a cheat sheet. So like I, have to use a card with Deuce because of how much that goes into him. And that's not necessarily a build book thing, but I made my card, my cheat sheet while I was building my build book, because as I was putting things into my build book, I'd write them on my card. So there I'm good. <laughs> no, it's, it's very, very handy, especially if the judges want to take your build book and look through it. So you can't like flip through it. You don't have the, the, the thing where you're like, uh, uh, cause I still panic when I talk to judges. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it. Um, okay. And then I've got, Okay, so this this is an older build book that um, is not digital. So same kind of idea that I've put my references and stuff and information on the front. I've also included the timestamp of how long it took me. Um, I like to include materials wherever possible. So 
for this particular one, I've included it on the page with the items that they're on, but I've also done it where it's like the first page being materials and techniques. Um, and like this, the undershirt was something in this costume that was really hard to see, um, like how it was finished. So I basically did like, yes, this is what went into this. So even if they couldn't see these pieces, that is something that I could talk about, um, which a lot of times like the build book is such a glorious resource um, in that respect. And when you're doing like things that, again, judges can't see, example, I did like a in sleeve puff thing so my sleeves would forever be puffy. So I included all that work because they wouldn't have known that otherwise, as well as in this case, I use magnets to attach some items. And that's something the judges would never, you know, see or necessarily like, you know, brain. If, if you can't easily show them, put it in your build book because it'll give you more points if it's executed well. And in this respect, I used magnets because it was an, an extremely clean way to move things, like take it on and off. And I, it was handy. Um, and then again, another physical build book, more with the techniques. I did it all on one page this time. So all of the items I used, that are not fabric, then all the fabric items. And then I included all of the bling uh, just to show how many different stones that I used. And then another example of something that they don't necessarily see, I made Franken vest, which was literally a vest back. I think it ended up with like three fronts, uh, but that's something that they wouldn't see because all the vest structure is hidden under a coat. So that's that's a strategy to put things that they wouldn't really see usually um and then this is one of my most recent books that i did that was digital so this is what i mean with like taking elements of your costume and putting them into the build book and i tend to keep it around like the edges because it doesn't look cluttered but it gives a more coherent look to the build book. And I find it useful sometimes to put like, if, if you're figuring out how a costume goes together, um, a breakdown. And this is like your rubric of, well, this is how you plan to make it. If this ends up becoming not relevant, don't include anything like this. But I find it extremely useful for when I'm trying to figure out stuff as well as showing the judges this was my thought process on making this. And since this one was a digital one, I just listed my materials and what I did to a lot of the items because uh, there's a lot of overlap for this particular book. So that's why I chose to do just a list and then I explained where things were basically. And then again, with the include what the judges can't see. So I had made an OB piece. So I included like how it was like held on because there was an item over top of it that hid that as well as joining. Um, this is actually felt. So I had to join felt to make it long enough. And then I actually made an entire corset underneath it to help the structure. Again, that's something that the judges wouldn't see. And to show that that is something that I did, I literally had my measurements and paper, and then I showed the steps until it was basically about 75% done. And usually that's where I no longer take pictures unless there's like a drastic change because you're gonna be presenting it and 75 plus like to 100, usually not a heck of a lot changes depending on the item um but yeah that's that's my stuff and one of the things I, that you didn't mention before you before you geek out because i know you're gonna geek out um okay. 
What Sakura usually does, which she didn't mention, is she'll take a piece of the fabric that's undyed and then a piece of the dyed fabric and put a piece in, in the build book because they they specialize in dyeing. And so showing what the before and after is is a, is a big perk. Yes. Thank you for that. <laughs> I was just excited to get to these guys. So we're probably going to go impulse. a little over today. It's fine. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, yes. So Allocate Impulse, they were the best in show winners at Soccer Con this year. And... I absolutely love their build book for the respect that, so it's perfect blue. So beyond these two pages, there's a lot of blue incorporated, but the blue means that the items that they worked on were done for both costumes. If it was pink, like if, if the, the title's pink, it was Mima. If it was red, it's Rumi. And it's very, it's very easy to see that as well as they have front, full front, side, back. Same for this. So you're able to see all of the parts of the costume, which is very, very useful for judges. Not always possible with um, costumes, but if you can include these types of references. Um, and if you would like to hunt these two down on um, on. I will grab the link to the allocate, but um, it's also, so it's Aki V on Instagram and Peppy Rain are the cosplayers. Mm -hmm. so this is also a good example of a group cosplay done together. Yes. Um, Cause it, yeah, it was both of them. So like this is their corset and this is a great way to show like, these are things that went into this specifically. So this is this text. So they have said things as concise as possible and crediting. So they, where they got the pattern, showing the changes that they made, and then a brief description of what actually went on. Same with this, it's very concise, but it shows exactly the work that went into it because this is where they started this is, you know, partway through and this is getting towards the end and this is how it's finished. Uh, so it's, I, I just, I love their build book because it's so well put together and like they have the cute little hearts and stuff, which relates to parts of the movie. And like, it's, it's so well done. And like something like this, they, um, their skit had like a, a blood element and this was, I believe held on by a magnet and like, Having that, oh yeah, this is not attached to the costume is, again, a brilliant, you know, way to show in the build book actually what you did. Um, and this actually goes to what Sam said. They cobbled their own shoes. So, of course, they detailed what they actually did for that and showed that both of them have different foot sizes. So they had to make you know two very unique pieces and it's it's this kind of stuff that you may forget to talk about that absolutely will get you more points in competition um and then here is again Rumi. so you know this is related to only one of the costumes while this is related to two of the costumes and then this one has a little bit more text but a lot went into it um because, like, they have, I think it's uh, Weed Eater Cord holding this together. And that's a very innovative use of material. So if you do something like that, include that Stuff in your build. It's so much stronger than people give it credit for. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... it's <laughs> I'm going to switch to that. I usually use Fishing Line because Fishing Line is so much stronger than, like, Crafting Lines and stuff. But the, I, well, when they said the Weed Eater stuff, I'm like, yes. Well, they needed it to break because this was a breakaway. Yeah. And that breaks fairly well, not easy, but like it worked for them and it's just brilliant. Uh, and again, this is just another, this was Mima only. And they actually pointed like, oh, this, this is related to this. This is related to this. And this is like an overview. Again, it looks very organized. It's not cluttered, but it gets the point across of this is what we made. This is what went into it. And this is how things are finished that you can't see because I, I believe you yeah. can't see that. And like, this is their progress of the horsehair. So 
No, I mean, is... I've even had people make their own undergarments and take photos of it on like a mannequin. So because they're they're shy, they don't want to show themselves. That's fine. Uh, and they put it on a mannequin. They're like, look, I made my own underwear. Sweet. <laughs> No, that's yeah. Right, but so that's, do you want to you want to share yours now? Wait, me? Do you, yeah. Do you have a bill book? Oh yeah. So I have two. I was going to show because I was going to show one real fast of like baby Sam and what she thought build books should look like versus <laughs> a few years later <laughs> out, like what they probably should include. So I my mm. build books have been digital since the beginning. Um, I started using Instructables a really long time ago, um, and so I've always had instructables um and uh i started with uh creating armor with warbla um and apparently fifty nine thousand people have looked at this i'm nervous now um you guys there's better ones look at the better ones um <laughs> but uh this started with me just trying to figure out how to use the product um in arizona this is before they tightened up the uh recipe and so now it can handle heat a lot better but I was just trying to figure out how to do it. So I broke it down with just like what um, tools I used. I don't have as many photos. I did include like the patterns and then when I cut it out of foam and when I cut it out of Warbla and I have some basic really short paragraphs, but I don't have a lot of photos. And I did have some good details on like how to sandwich it. It's just, you see that I keep jumping steps because I'm like, I didn't even record or take pictures of how I, the fact that I went and bought three different sizes of nylon wire or nylon rope from um, Home Depot. And then I had to hand wrap it in Warbla and I had to get special automotive gloves because the Warbla was melting onto my hand. So I wish I'd like shown people, hey, this is a danger that you might encounter, but you learn stuff along the way. And then eventually all I had was this photo. So this was not a bad first tutorial it's not a bad first build book to show how i built my own armor but i also never took photos of the corset that i have in here like i i took a corset stripped all the fabric out of it and relined it with leather i made my arms uh, my leather arm socks um i made boot covers that you can't see that are under here so there were things that i didn't track well a few years later i figured out you should be tracking a lot more because they're going to ask you a lot more questions than you expect and so I did Yojimbo. And this actually, this build book is on the Warbla website. Um, so it is actually on Warbla itself. Um, they did sponsor the product for this build. And even with them sponsoring the product, it was still $400. So there are some builds that are just going to end up being really tough for you. But this one, I made sure that I had the artist's rendition that I was curious to re replicate, but also the original character that it was based off of, and then my rendition. Like Chibi said, having that image to show all three versions is usually very useful. Mm -hmm. um, and then this time, I broke down the supplies. So the tools that I used, and I broke it down into materials that I used, um, and I included everything. Um, this was a really big build. It took me three months to build the first time. And then I went back in and reworked it for another three months. So six months of work. Um, I did the recording like uh, Sakura recommended. And not only did I do recording, but I also took photos of everything and stills from most of those videos um, that I captured. You also, you needed a, a much larger con for this piece too, right? Like the, there was a lot. I went to a national championship at Los yeah. Angeles. Wow. Yeah. So, and I play second in Journeyman in a national championship, which is very, by the way, like if you're competing, make sure you pay attention to the type of championship you're competing in. Um, there are levels depending on the countries you go to. Some of them are regional, some are national and some are international. And depending on those levels, it can increase the expectations for your build books. I know you guys have mentioned that before, but a lot of people I think don't understand that regional is typically just going to be a local event. It's going to be governed by different rules because every content to be different. Whereas national, there's a set of standards that every state has to apply by or every country has to apply by. And international is the same. It's just it tends to be even more aggressive with its standards. So <laughs> they tend to get a bit more complicated the, the more you inter include a, a global perspective. Um, so this is, I'd say, a build book where I included a lot of detail. I do have a summary PDF that I extracted from this where I just took these images and then real quick on the side, just threw the supplies and tools and got rid of all of the uh, paragraphs so that the judges wouldn't have to go through all of that. Um, 
But this was also because it was a national championship, I had the privilege of being able to send this link over to the judges in advance so that they could look through it earlier. Um, and that's another reason why I mentioned I like having some of these digital ones, because if there are a lot of judges in the room on like D23 and, 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 and some of the other cons have gone from just two to three judges to like six and there's a huge panel, so it can be tricky for them to share. And that's why I also like to try, try to have a digital ready as well so that they can just access it through whatever mobile device or maybe laptop they have with them and still be able to navigate it without having to worry about not seeing the bill book, physical book. But I, oh, there's boobies, <laughs> eh, boobs. Um, but yeah, this is a book that I would say, I am not gonna go through all of it. I will just post the link in, um, but this is if you're going on a much larger competition level, um, national or international, that meets most of the standards for those. Um, whereas the first one I did would absolutely be fine for regional. You're just going to probably get asked a lot more questions. Mm -hmm. No, and to add on to that, if you are doing like a larger competition, there are sometimes actual guidelines to yep. these are the things you need to include in your build book and make sure they, you have those or you could actually face uh, disqualification. And they um, also want to know if a material was sponsored. Like I said, my Warbler was sponsored. It cost, it would have cost me 200 additional dollars, but because uh, it was sponsored, they're like, well, did they sponsor anything else? I'm like, no, they just sent me two sheets of Warbler. Un, un, unedited, unfettered, just a whole roll of Warbler. And they're like, oh, well, I guess that doesn't do much for you. And I'm like, other than save me money, you're right, doesn't do much for me. <laughs> but it was very useful because it saved me money. It was already and $42 it, deep and it was dying. <laughs> I think one of the most important things to remember is if you have a question, if you're not mm -hmm. sure if you need a build book, if you're not sure what the build book's supposed to look like, reach out to your coordinator because yep. they can tell mm -hmm. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the coordinator should be more than happy to answer. Um, if you are interested in being like a costly coordinator or director or manager, I highly recommend shadowing people. Um, it is a very time-consuming, overwhelming job and role. Um, and there's a lot more involved with it than you'd expect. Um, it's more than just uh, getting judges and more than just um, making sure the rules are set and that everyone understands things. There's a lot of communication and business-related acumen you, you're going to have to be familiar with. Absolutely. Yeah. So I... But yeah, I think that's, that's all I have here. And I know we've got a little bit over, but if you guys have any questions, let us know. But I think we can start wrapping up. I mean, this has been a really good discussion. <laughs> yes, uh, this has been really fun. Thank you guys for letting me join you. Yeah, Sakura and me are very passionate about this, if you haven't. If you can't notice, um, I've been getting really into competitions and doing more competitive stuff. Uh, just just for me, it's like to, to see myself grow. Like, I'm. it's very exciting to see from like where I started to where I'm at now, like winning Deuce really, that costume made me cry on so many occasions, but finally like showing that I put a lot of work into this and other people think I put a lot of work into it was a really rewarding experience. And because of it, I ended up making a bunch of other friends and yeah. it became such a community thing. It was the first time I started using cost gear for stuff and it just got easier and easier. And now it's, it's such a fun thing to do. I love competing and I take it quite seriously, but, uh, but it, it's just, a it, if you're a cosplayer that want to like, kind of like show your growth or if you want to, if you want to build something for more than just building it, even if you just join a little local con, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and a build book is a good way to have the documentation of how hard you work on a piece. Yeah. And it's, it's fun to look back as well Ooh. on like, Oh, this is how I started. This is how things are going. It's it's really rewarding a lot of times, I find. And I, I am going to say, if you are um, newer or even if you're just on a really strict budget, don't be afraid to go to like thrift stores or consignment stores Ooh, and take fabric from them and upcycling fabric. I mean, I've taken an entire dress, stolen all the satin from it, like, and used it to make an entirely different garment. Don't think you have to get all the best materials. Like, you... Cosplay shouldn't be based off privilege. It should be based off of skill and technique that you learn yourself. That's exactly it. Um, fur is super expensive. If I ever find any like furry pillows or something at thrift stores where you can just wash the hell out of them and they're good to use, like peak. Um, it is. It is more about what you put into it. A judge should never be judging based on your actual physical appearance. 
Um, it should be based entirely on what you're building and what you're bringing that day. And so if you just like building it, and even if you're a crafter, you can always be the builder and then have a model too. A lot of conventions welcome having a crafter who has a model where their piece. You can always build something and then tell them, hey, I'm the one who built it. Here's how I built it. You might have to talk to the judges, but you could have somebody else wear it on stage if that's not for you. Like the competition community has grown so much over the last handful of years. Mm -hmm. Uh, to add on to that, though, um, with like reduce, reuse, recycle, judges should never judge you on the materials that you have used. It should be your workmanship and how you have used the materials, not, you know, if if someone gets like a true silk dupiani and then someone else gets a polyester one, that should absolutely not mean anything at all. Yeah. It's just your choice of materials. It's how you use it. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing that's one to be mindful of. If you do encounter that in a convention, make sure you provide feedback to whomever can accept it. Um, because that is, um, that's something I want to talk about when I do like a little series on bias and unconscious bias. I've encountered it uh, about six times in the past year where there just was bias that should not have been present. And I, I think that people just simply are unaware of it. So kind of bringing it into like the biases that cosplayers encounter in the community, making people more aware of that might be something that we can do on one of our talks, because right. I think it's important to know that everyone should be on equitable footing. Absolutely. And like, as an example, don't feel bad if you're chimping out on your big costume. I My next big cosplay build was going to be Malleus Overblot, but he's a really expensive piece. It's going to take a lot of time. And I am going to build him, but it's probably going to be in pieces where I can slowly buy it because it is a very expensive piece. It has lighting, it has EVA, it has more blood. It's going to be big. But now I'm kind of changing gears and I've been thinking about another competition build that's going to be much more budget friendly for me. <laughs> um, while I'm slowly working on Malleus, I can build something else where I still feel like I'm doing something. I'm still doing what I love. I'm still building for a competition. It's just now I know I can afford it in a much more manageable place and get used to my new crafting space instead of trying to do this big, huge build that's like the biggest I've ever done with a bunch of techniques yeah. I've never done. <laughs> I'm picking something that I'm like, okay, this is bite-sized. I know almost all the techniques. I actually have quite a bit of the fabric myself um, that I can just like pull out of my bins that I have extra of. And I know the fabric I do need the most of is cheap. So I'm probably going to pick this costume while I'm waiting. And like, don't ever, that, that should not sway. No. The only thing that should sway what you build is how passionate you are about it. And I want us to give some advice to judges too. Um, judges, uh, a lot of people, when you get to judging, it's because you've competed a lot or you've built some kind of a rapport or, uh, you know, people trust in your in your judgment for being unbiased and looking at it through a neutral perspective and just for the skills that people have used and implemented. Right. Um, or difficult materials, because there are some materials that are just a pain in the butt. And you're like, wow, you really wanted to do that. All right. Um, but. One thing for judges is make sure you yourself are occasionally maybe going to these competitions and competing again to remind yourself of what it feels like to be judged, to remind yourself of what it feels like to be in that green, green room and have that nervous energy and maybe what it feels like to go on stage. And it could also give you some insight into conventions in your area that um, maybe could use some more help or, you know, maybe you can bring new ideas from other cons and say, hey, I saw this. Could we try this out? So I always recommend, even if it's just once a year, even if you think you're a master level competition, even if you're journeyman, it doesn't matter if you if you're judging others in order to make sure that you are not putting yourself on a pedestal above them, that you're staying at the same level and that they are people, too. I recommend still competing so that you know what it feels like to be in that position. A hundred percent. Yeah, um, like, honestly, that could be an entire episode of, like, judge etiquette or, like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, is, um, yeah. I see you, Apprentice. Uh, you said, I definitely feel anxiety about material occasionally, so this is really nice to hear. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. No, absolutely. Um, as an FYI, my deuce costume... So the polyester is the most expensive of any of my materials you, I used on it. And it was only like $15 a yard. And I used, I think, three yards. The white is literally all muslin, like $2 a yard muslin, because that was the color that was the most accurate and that I, the material I trusted to work with the most. Like, it literally does not matter what material you're working with. If it has a really gorgeous finish, that's all you want. All of, like my headpiece, it's literally cheap, like cheap plastic. Like it's just a piece of like wobbly plastic. And the first time I competed, I was using cardboard for a lot of my details. They were just prettied up. Like, 
100% does not matter yeah. what the material is. In fact, I love seeing people who use cardboard and make it not look like cardboard because I'm like, how did you do that? Um, so like, don't ever feel bad about that. I'm yeah. scared. I've never used this like, uh, What is? That? I don't know. It's, it's kind of like chiffon, but not. It's weird. This is it's translucent. Like and when I tried sewing through it, oh my gosh, it like, I'm glad I have testing, but this is a trim that ends up when you release it, it does this like feathering effect oh. and I have to trim it and melt it and try to create like fish fins coming off a dress. <laughs> no, it looks like iridescent organdy. That is such a it is, piece of that fabric. And I don't have a serger. So we're going to take a little piece and we're going to test some things. <laughs> so don't be that. afraid of materials. Just know that you, you you always want to take a little piece and you want to run it through your sewing machine and see what it loves and see what it hates. <laughs> I I always order or buy a little extra fabric just to, to test, especially if it's something I'm not used to working this with. This $23 for two yards. Oof. Well, this I guess is what not <laughs> I'm not <laughs> spending more. <laughs> I just wanted the same color. <laughs> Uh, we've definitely outstayed our welcome. Sorry, Thank you, everyone who's hung out with us. Uh, as you can tell, we're very passionate about this kind of topic. Mm -hmm. But it was a lovely time. Um, we had a great time actually building that uh, presentation because now we can use it for panels. <laughs> so we're like, heck yeah. Um, but if there's anything you guys want to see more of, if you have questions or if you would like a, a, like a better digital copy of our build books to look through, uh, reach out to us. I really don't. I never mind sharing my build book. Um, mm -hmm. It's very helpful. I've looked through a million build books to get the idea that I have today. So, yeah, if you want to see any of our stuff a little bit closer or have a better time looking through it so you can read it better or see the pictures better, totally reach out to us. Um, if you guys have any questions about cost gear or are interested in cost gear at all, you can also reach out to us. Um, I am currently helping work on the event planner. So if anybody has like, hey, I've always wanted to see this in an app, reach out to me because we're trying to figure out what cosplayers want to see in event building. Um, but yeah, so I guess we'll close out. I'm Chibi Rain Cloud. Um, thank you so much. I'm from Seattle area. You can find me literally as Chibi underscore Rain Cloud on everything. Um, that's uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch. I think, yeah. It's cost gear. It's all that. Um, but uh, I guess my last bit of advice is if you want to do it, just do it. Like if it's yourself, stop. Like if you're telling yourself you're not ready, I don't know enough. Um, I don't have the right materials. Like do it. I, I can't help. Like I have stopped myself for years doing builds that I've been wanting to do forever. And now I finally, after doing Deedlet a couple years ago with Sam, I was like, what, what was stopping myself? Like literally I was stopping myself. That's it. Like nothing else was stopping me. And that costume was hard, but I was so happy with the outcome. So like, if there's something you're passionate about and you want to do a big build, whether you're competing in it or not, you just want to make it, do it. Get started. Start buying little things. Go to the thrift store. Buy some cheap fabric. Work on your mock-ups. Just do what you can to build that costume slowly. You don't need a deadline. You can just start working on the thing you want. Absolutely. Oh, um, I'm Soccer Elric. You can find me on Facebook under Soccer Elric Cosplay, Instagram under Soccer Elric. Um, that's all I can remember right now. And uh, Chibi and I have a joint account, uh, both on Facebook and Instagram under matchblossom.cos, where we're going to be posting more stuff that we are planning on doing together, as well as trying to get more like whip stuff. And show some love, please. We just yeah. opened it up. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but yeah, uh, this is where we're going to share where we do our panels, what panels we run, um, any of our meetup content, and uh, whenever we feel like streaming and doing stuff and sharing our whips, that's also going to go on there. Yep. And I'm Thermal Cosplay. You can find me at thermalcosplay.com and all my links are there. I'm probably more active, I'd say, on Instagram or Facebook, but in general, I'm not as active right now because I'm building something at the moment. I'm I'm networking with a lot of people. We're trying to build a very large local community of makers so that people have more resources. Um, and so that means it's taking my time away from social media just to make sure everyone's got like a good support to be in. Um, 
But yeah, uh, this is Cause Talk Live. You can find us on causetalk-live.com. And once again, we are sponsored by Age of Radio. We stream twice a month. We stream one Sunday a month at 12 p.m. and one Wednesday a month at 6 p.m. We will be streaming again on Wednesday, April 24th at 6 p.m. Uh, Arizona time. And we're going to be talking with Wolfie. Wolfie is a uh, California-based cosplayer, and they have created this cause for creating equity among cosplayers in their area. And we're going to talk about their cause. That's, That's amazing. exciting. So thank you everyone for joining us today and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy Sunday. Bye everybody.